scrolling, scrolling, and more scrolling. This pretty much sums up my experience with Pinterest, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Whenever I used to sit down to engage in some good old fashioned studying, I would spend the first half an hour endlessly doom scrolling through Pinterest in the hopes that I would find that one reference that would make me a better artist, um, that would inspire me and, and, and make a really cool painting. And the truth is, that's not Pinterest's job. That's your job. You're the artist. You should be able to find the beauty in any image or, or make any image work for you. Um, so this endless scrolling is really unhealthy and it prevents you from studying. But Pinterest plays a part in this, right? It shows you images that it knows you like. It shows you images you've already seen. It shows you more of the same. You'll notice as these images go past, quite a few of them are of pieces of armor. Now, I think I only looked at like one piece of armor, but there you go. It's gonna carry on showing me it. Um, there are other problems with Pinterest as well that I've come across, right? So first of all, they want you to keep scrolling. So that's what you're gonna do and you're gonna waste an awful lot of time. Two, the images tend to be a bit generic. When you're first starting out, it might seem like actually they're really artsy and they're really cool and they're not like the images that I see on Facebook or Instagram or anything else, but they have their own kind of genre of genericism, right? Um, a lot of the images from Pinterest become very recognizable to someone who's looked at a lot of Pinterest images. Um, you see the same images over and over again, the same portraits, the same famous faces that all of your favorite artists have probably painted already. Um, and the other problem with this is that they tend to be heavily edited. They tend to be very color graded. Someone's meddled with them, changed a lot of information, which isn't very good. Uh, because the more decisions that someone has made in terms of Adobe Lightroom, the less decisions there are for you to make when you're painting. Okay. Um, Pinterest, I already said, will show you images that you've already seen or already liked. Um, if you dare to save an image of a washing machine for the next three weeks, that is literally all you are going to be shown. Okay. Um, this is bad. This is kind of incestuous when it comes to references that we want to see. I think as an artist, you want to be presented with things that you haven't seen before, new things, new things that you wouldn't have thought to have searched for. Um, and they're going to inspire you in new and different ways, right? We shouldn't just look at things that we already like. We get this sort of artistic echo chamber, mm. and I think that that can really stagnate your own growth. Uh, the fourth problem is legal problems. You might not have thought about it before, especially if you're just the, the kind of person who saves anything from Google and starts painting from it. Um, but most images on Pinterest are not free to use. They're the intellectual property of a photographer, and if you decide to paint it and then, I don't know, maybe put some prints up online or something and try and sell it, you're going to be in a bit of a muddle because you don't own most of the decisions that have gone in uh, to those images, right? So instead, I have a proposition, a different program or website that you should use. And I have a pretty specific way that I think you should use it. Here we go. This is it, my proposed alternative to Pinterest, Wikimedia Commons. Um, it's really, really great. All of the images are freely usable. They're all Creatively Commons licensed. So you don't have to be worried about copyright or anything else. Um, it's also not a social media website, right? Like Pinterest is. So it's not showing me images that I want. It's just showing me objectively images based on search not based on how many other people have liked or viewed those things the really really useful thing about wikipedia commons that i love is this random file button so i'm just going to click random file and immediately it's showing me something i don't think i would have ever thought to have searched or put in a search bar on pinterest right i'm being shown something really quite unique i've not really seen many other people do cool paintings of old old cars or anything like that let's hit it again got a manuscript so part of Wikimedia Commons is actually that it provides like videos and PDFs and things as well so we could read through that if we really really wanted there you go there's, there's some audio just any form of media now isn't this wonderful that the light coming through this window I'm assuming it's stained glass you can't actually see the glass itself but you can see that the light coming through is colored 
and it's reflecting and bouncing around in here and it's making all the all the walls go a bit more pink let's go again that's just a nice bit of architecture that we could think about drawing or incorporating in a, in a different way it's it's almost kind of ornate but very rubbly and, and, and poorly put together at the same time it's this huge river going through this valley but you know, if you sat down and asked me if I would have painted a river that colour, I don't think I would. I think I'd paint it uh, blue or a reflection of the sky or something. But this is this kind of very light brown, which is interesting. Um, one more. Look at that. It's a it's a fragment of some kind of tapestry, and it's got some really cool patterns and textures in there. I might not necessarily use this to study, but I could use it as the base for a painting. I could put it down as just some texture on a canvas to paint on top of. So the idea of this, and there are a few benefits really, um, is one, it's truly random. I'm being introduced here to images that I'm not familiar with at all images not only that I'm not familiar with, images that I never would have thought to search for. This is some kind of um, mechanical plow with these blades, you know, could I turn this into some sort of uh, horrible rusty steampunky weapon or something? I think I probably could. Um, two, as we're seeing, um, most images are not overproduced or kind of tampered with creatively. We're not getting images that are really, really heavily edited, uh, which we, we do tend to get on Pinterest. All of these images are just taken with pretty normal cameras. Uh, they're not color graded, they're not warped. I can trust that what I'm seeing is um, kind of a depiction of reality that, that no one has taken into a Adobe Lightroom or anything. So that's nice. I find that again, when you are on Pinterest, a lot of the images you're looking at, they're not very realistic um, and you don't want that to warp your perception uh, of reality or, or warp your thinking when, you, when it comes to painting things, right? Even this aerial photography, you know, look at all these buildings and how they can just be reduced to kind of speckles of black and white noise. If I were painting this, maybe I would just get a scattery noise brush and I'd, and I'd pop that in. Look how dark the trees are compared with the buildings and the roads and everything else. That's interesting, very interesting. Um, so that's one, it's random. Two, most images are not overproduced. Three, all the images are creatively licensed. You can use them without fear of being sued, um, which is, again, quite a nice thing. Um, but four, this random file button is just, it's a miracle, really. And I wanna show you how I actually use this. So this is my compost bin, is what I'm gonna call it, right? Okay, um, my compost bin is just a collection of images from Wikimedia that I like, that I enjoy looking at um, for tons of different reasons. You know, maybe I chose this tree because it's really overexposed and the light's coming through it, but the sky's just pure white. Um, obviously I picked this guy for his gesture. Look at this insane overextension on the leg. This car, I thought it was interesting that it's a very reflective vehicle, but actually it's sort of just flat red. The only reflections are these highlights, right? So it's not reflecting uh, people or the room or anything else. It's just pure flat red. And it's just reflecting those crisp highlights. So I save images out that I like, uh, and this means that whenever I do come to study, when I sit down and I go, I want to do a painting, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to spend that half an hour, hour searching through Pinterest, really melting my own brain um, and struggling to come up with something that I want to paint. Instead, it's pretty easy. I can just pop in this folder and I can take uh, an image and I'll show you an even easier way of doing that. But the first thing that I want to show you is an auto clicker wherever I have it saved give me a sec there it is okay so it's just a generic auto clicker it's nothing special 
Um, but I find that an auto clicker in combination with this website is pretty powerful. So I'm going to change the mouse button to middle mouse. I'm going to have it repeat just 20 times for the sake of this demo. And I'm going to change the number to 10 milliseconds. Okay. Then I'm going to hover over a random file and I'm going to hit F6. And off we go, right? Now all I need to do is put my mouse here and I can just click through these. And some of them are really kind of interesting. Some of them are less interesting, obviously. Um, look at this, it's a, it's a kind of medieval coin that's been bruised and battered and you're getting all these different reflections. Look at how the reflected light here has this blue halo around it, but the reflected light here is a bit warmer. It's like two different kinds of oxidization, I guess. Um, Victorian manuscripts of leaves, actual leaves. Mm. What does this road look like when there's been a, a, a serious storm? You know, all that water, bay windows, more plants, really cool trees. I've never seen palm trees that look quite like that. It's almost like a squirrel's tail or something. It's really cool. A plane. It's funny that the, the green stripe on the plane is almost the same color as the grass in the background. You're getting this composition that's a series of horizontal strips. Writing, bushes, another plane people in the White House, and a really nice image of a man. And when I find a nice image that I like, that I think would be interesting to study, I just right click it, save as, and it doesn't go in my John Singer Sargent folder, it goes in compost bin, save. Brilliant, right? And I can do that once a day maybe, I'll just hop on, I'll set the auto clicker to, to pull 50 random images for me. I'll just click through and I'll pick ones that I like and I found some really interesting stuff that again I don't think I'd ever would have found otherwise look at this kid um, I don't know whether or not this is very sad as an image or quite happy this guy's singing his hearts out um, and you'll find that um, when you're looking through this image it still has my kind of taste because it's images that I like right so all images that I have picked because I like them for one reason or another or I find them interesting for one reason or another if you were using it I'm sure you would find a series of very different images that you find appealing as opposed to the ones that I find appealing this is just paper that I, I found I think it's got like an old map on one side but I thought it'd be interesting to draw on top of um, but once I have all my images, I go to my other program, which is this random image viewer made by uh, Julien Gauthier, right? who's a really good artist. And it's a simple program. I just click this little folder. It's already in my compost bin, so I just click select current folder. And it's going to just show me a random image. So again, when I come and I sit down to study, I don't even have to think about... Um, which one of these I'm going to pick, I can get the program to do it for me, right? Uh, and it just takes that kind of uh, mental workload off me. I find a lot of the time when people want to learn and want to study, that's the problem is, is starting. And it's a problem because, oh, well, what do I want to study and how do I want to study it? And, oh, there's all the images in the world to choose from. And this takes it off your hands and just allows you to sit down and paint and put the hours in. So every time I click, it will give me a random image from my folder. These are some cosplayers, but I, I actually thought it was really interesting to, to see them in like a different lighting because you usually only see these characters in film lighting, you know. Um, and I can just random click, click. There are other things that this program does and I'll link it in the description. It can turn things grayscale. So it can turn things black and white so you can just study value. It can flip images left and right. So maybe you paint the whole thing flipped or whatever you want. Um, it can flip them upside down as well, which is interesting. And you might be like, well, why would I do that? Well, because it abstracts it and now it's just a series of shapes and it's a bit harder to see it as a statue. So you could just think about copying shapes and focus on that. Um, the other really, really useful thing, in fact, kind of the main uh, function of this program is it has a timer. So if I set this timer to zero minutes and one second, and then I press start, every second it will automatically filter through these images. Uh, again, it's showing me some of the repeat ones because my folder isn't that big at the moment. Um, 
and this is great, right? Because obviously you're not going to do it for one second. You might recognize this one off my Instagram. Um, but you could set it to be 15 minutes and you could just, when the timer goes off and it goes onto the next image, you just move on. You go to the next image. Prevents you from again sitting there laboring over something for three or four hours when you only really need to spend 30 minutes on it. Um, and it forces you to move on to a, a new uh, subject matter. So those are the two things that I want to show you in conjunction with Wikimedia Commons that have really helped me produce the amount of work that I've produced this year. So uh, again, links are going to be in the descriptions for all this stuff. Um, if you're interested in getting more help and tips and things like that, um, we do have a Patreon now. So check that out. Uh, I've done another video where I've done a, a Patreon paint over and I'm going to do more of them in the future. So if you want your work painted over or you just want some advice on all this stuff, join the Patreon. Uh, we have a Discord. Uh, we also have a public Discord that you can join uh, where I won't be giving you as many paint overs, but there's a lot of other really nice friendly people in there who might. So um, worth having a look at. Okay, good. Goodbye. Thank you.